way in which we screen around suicide is quite important and there's two groups of evidence that looks at different types of screening. Screening traditionally looking for a predictive outcome is not helpful and so that's a low, moderate, high outcomes. So in that context any screening measure that elicits a low, moderate, high um, predictive capacity is of no value. What we do know about screening is when screening looks to um, evaluate somebody's needs or they identify that there is somebody who's at an increased vulnerability for suicide, they can then be um, moved through to a care strategy that supports them. The evidence that came through, and this has been long-standing, 1983 from Pocorny, was that anybody that was identified according to psychometrics, um, where they worked from that low, moderate, high, actually had an increased rate of false positives and false negative outcomes. Any tool that highlights um, green, orange or red, where green is no intervention, no support, um, they can go out, um, versus red where they have high or emergency care, I wouldn't be advocating for those tools because they're not looking at the fluctuating nature of suicidality and they're not actually supporting addressing those needs that a person a person brings into the room with you. That's why we would be looking towards doing a more um, person-centred assessment of suicide uh, risk. So any screening tool or any measurement that supports someone being triaged through to assessment that looks at um, their psychosocial needs and how to address those needs is definitely indicated and that's part of what Zero Suicide is advocating for. So universal screening is a process where anybody who comes into contact with a healthcare setting has um, a screening tool put to them. That could be someone who's broken their arm, somebody who's very intoxicated, and that tool should include suicide specific uh, questions. And they might be questions like, have you ever thought that life wasn't worth living? They might be questions like, have you made plans to take your life? Those questions should be suicide specific rather than about mental health because we are specifically trying to understand whether or not there is a risk um, that's emerging for that person or that is present for that person around suicide. Obviously there are some very direct questions that you need to ask when you're screening someone. Are you thinking about taking your life or do you have a plan? I think those questions are non-negotiables. And those specific questions, therefore, will be a flag or an indicator that they should go through for further assessment. And we're looking at universal screening as a primary prevention approach. And that universal screening means that anybody who's coming in contact with a health service is having that screen undertaken. When we look at doing a suicide risk formulation, we are essentially gathering all of the data and all the information and the narrative from the person before us to synthesise and to better understand the factors that are impacting on them, to uh, precipitate their desire for, for taking their own life. A suicide risk assessment uh, is essentially the process of gathering that information or understanding the narrative of an individual. The formulation is how we pull it together and how we work with that. Uh, essentially we have to be working with the person that's before us, we have to be understanding their, their narrative, the things that push them into a suicide um, process or a suicidal crisis, as well as the factors that help them to come out the other side. And so formulation is all of the information and pulling all that information and working with the person to understand what their needs are that will support them to find the life that's worth living. I think the most important tool when we look at developing a risk formulation or understanding how we're going to develop an intervention or a, or a treatment plan for somebody, the most important tool that we have is the person before us. They're the ones that will be supporting whether something is going to be effective or not effective. Beyond that, any tool that supports uncovering their psychosocial needs or any of the pressures um, that are impacting them is of course a valuable tool. There are a few that I would be uh, looking at because of the breadth um, of data that's gathered and that includes things like the screening tool for assessing risk of suicide, the STARS protocol. There are other um, tools as well which might be integrated in treatment such as the suicide status form um, that's within the CAMS model. The identification process for someone who is struggling with mental health is extremely important of course and I think it's um, it's definitely a place where we need buy-in from um, the patient themselves. It needs to be an open fluid conversation 
you know, to really establish where they're at and understand their story and their narrative and what's been going on for them, rather than just looking at um, whether they might where they might be on a scale of risk, um, you know, because crisis point can come out of nowhere um, through, you know, trauma triggers and, and what, it, what that experience might be for the person. So it's really about understanding um, their story and really having an open, honest conversation about that to, to assess um, the risk of that person.